So the way to grow desire is to be open to the discovery of truth about things. So, how do I know I have a desire for mathematics? How many of you have a desire for mathematics? Very few. <laughs> I think it was four people. <laughs> Including myself. <laughs> now, why, why do you feel most of us don't have a desire for mathematics? What happened during our school years with mathematics? You weren't that good at it. We weren't that good at it, many of us. And so what happened when we weren't that good at it? Did somebody come along and give you extra tuition when you weren't that good at it? Sometimes they did, but most of the time they didn't. What did they do instead? They... Katarina? Um, that's the yelled at us. Right, so many of you got yelled at. Some of you, even at school, and, and when I went to school, got screamed at <laughs> by the frustrated teacher, right? They even screamed at now, of course, that's a pretty afraid thing, a fearful thing. You're a young child, just learning something, and when you didn't get it, somebody's now yelling at you or screaming at you or, or, or belittling you in front of the whole class. So now what do we have? We have a heap of emotions that cause us to... Whenever we think of mathematics, instead of thinking of mathematics, oh, it's fantastic, it's beautiful, there's so many interesting... When we think mathematics, what do most of us finish up thinking? Horrible. horrible, terrible, afraid, <laughs> and all these other emotions come up because we've been treated badly in the absorption of that particular area of expertise. Now imagine if all of us had not had that background. What would happen? Fred? They also told me I'm not smart enough. Yes, yeah. So, so when, when I wasn't doing my maths correctly, you're an idiot. You're stupid. You can't understand basic principles. There's something wrong with you. And for many of us, whenever we think of mathematics, we think there's something wrong with me. There's an automatic association between those two things. So, so when, I, when I talk about mathematics and how wonderful it is, the most, most people in an audience go, what? It's not wonderful. It's terrible. And the reality is, for the majority of us, we've had a terrible experience with mathematics. All through our lives we've had a terrible experience with mathematics and it's only when we, for the, generally the engineers or the scientists, they didn't have a terrible experience with mathematics generally and so they became engineers and scientists for that reason. But, but for those of the rest of us, we've had a terrible experience with it. A terrible emotional experience. Every time we think about it, we're still, some of us are 60 or 70 years of age and every time we think about it we just shudder. Still. <laughs> And we're 70 or 60. That's how much of a terrible experience it was. It's been carried with us the rest of our lives. So can you see the desire to know now is shut down completely because of the experience. So what we need to be concerned of with desire is if we have no desire for natural things, for things that are present in our universe, and mass is present in our universe, Science is present in our universe. Language is present in our universe. Right? All of these things, literature is present in our universe. All these things are present in our universe. If we don't have a desire for any one of them, then it's usually because we have emotional feelings from our childhood associated with those particular things that have shut down desire. So part of learning about desire is to release our fears associated with the particular thing. Now how do we release a fear? By actually doing it rather than just fearing it. 